In this video, I'll be talking specifically about astrocytes. But I can really jump onto astrocytes before I talk about what exactly is an astrocyte. Now, astrocyte is a type of glial cells. And what are glial cells? Glial cells are cells of the central nervous system and peripheral nervous system. Now, there are five types of glial cells. What exactly are they? They are Schwann cells, astrocytes, microglia, ependymal cells, and oligodendrocytes. Now, I've written the five types of glial cells right out here. Now, before we jump onto our astrocyte, let's talk about a little bit about the other glial cells. Just a quick review. Now, oligodendrocytes and Schwann cells, these two make myelin. The only difference is one makes myelin in the central nervous system, the other makes myelin in the peripheral nervous system. Can you guess which one? That's right. Schwann cells makes myelin our Schwann cells are supporting the peripheral nervous system and oligodendrocytes is making myelin or oligodendrocytes is supporting the central nervous system. Microglia, these cells are nothing but these are the macrophages of the central nervous system. These are the macrophages of the brain and the spinal cord. That's microglia. So now we are left with astrocytes and ependymal cells. Now before we go on to astrocytes, let's talk quickly about ependymal cells. Ependymal cells lines cavities. And we're going to talk about it more specifically while we talk about ependymal cells, but they line cavities of the ventricles and they release CSF or they make CSF. Now you can read up more about all these different types of cells in page 434, uh, first day 2012, uh, under, the under the neurology section. Anyways, now let's focus on our cell in, for this particular video, which is the astrocytes. Now if I asked you, what are the different functions of astrocytes, what would you tell me? There is so many different types of functions. So, one of them is development. Astrocytes is responsible for developing neural connection. What else? Maintenance. How does astrocyte maintain uh, the structure of the, of the brain and the spinal cord? It maintains normal electrolyte composition of the CSF in the central nervous systems. What else are the functions of astrocytes? Protection. Now, astrocytes protects the brain and the spinal cord from toxic substances and oxidative stress. Next, we have communication. Astrocytes communicate with other neurons or with other astrocytes through chemical messengers, obviously. The following one is removal. What does it remove from the CNS? What is the job of astrocytes? Astrocytes removes neurotransmitters from the synaptic cleft. Now, apart from all these, astrocytes also gives support to the central. It gives support to the central nervous system. It is responsible for repair. It is responsible for potassium metabolism, and it is also responsible for building the blood-brain barrier. So, what exactly is astrocytes? Astrocytes encompasses all these qualities. It can develop, it can maintain, it can protect, it can communicate, it can remove, it can support, it can repair. It's responsible for potassium metabolism and it's also responsible for building the blood-brain barrier. Now, how does it differentiate from other neurons in the, in the, in the brain? Well, let's say there is a mess in the brain. Let's say there is, you know, a rupture of one of a small blood vessel. Who's going to clean it up? Is astrocyte going to clean it up? Not really. Blood in the brain is responsible. Uh, the cleaning up job for cleaning up blood from the CNS is done by microglia, which is the macrophages of the, of the brain and the spinal cord. What astrocyte is going to do is as the microglia cleaning up the blood from the CNS, it's going to come and deposit there. 
okay it's going to try to control the damage that has been made and trying to maintain integrity of that particular region so it will do whatever it can to compensate for the loss in whatever situation if you have multiple sclerosis astrocyte is going to come and sit up there because it does it still wants that communication to go on uh, from from this neuron to the other side of the neuron even though there is damage in the middle am I coming through is it clear to you so astrocyte pretty much does all that it is going to support your brain whenever it needed it. it does not have a specific function it is uh, astrocyte is really the jack of all trades okay now that we have talked about that I quickly want to talk about what does it look like astrocyte really it is you know it has the name of a star shape it really looks like a star okay so it will have a star shape appearance and what you will see is that it will have its connection to the blood vessels so imagine that this is the blood vessel it will have its processes sitting on the blood vessels because it does so many functions it will need food it will need to develop it will need to multiply all the time so this star shaped uh, neurons are going to have its paws sitting on the blood vessels at all times so that is something also specific so if you look at a diagrammatic picture of the different types of neurons in the central nervous system you'll see that the one who, who is looking like a star well a lot of the neurons look like a star to me but how do we differentiate astrocytes is going to have this little paw sitting on the blood vessels continuously throughout the blood vessel in the central nervous system so now let's talk about marker for astrocytes now the marker for astrocyte is achieved by a substance called gfap now gfap stands for glial fibrillary acidic protein and this glial fibrillary acidic protein is really responsible for communication between the two foot processes of the astrocytes. So when we want to make sure that a certain region has astrocytes, we really test for GFAP, which is really respons specifically responsible for communication between two astrocytes. So here I've written out what GFAP stands for, glial fibrillary acidic protein. Do you really have to remember it? Not really. but you do have to remember that GFAP is responsible for, or it's, uh, it's used as a marker for astrocytes. Last but not the least, let's talk about some scenarios in terms of examples. So in this question, it says an old infarct consists of cystic cavity surrounded by a dense wall. The wall of the cyst is formed by what kind of cell? So if there is an infarct uh, in a cystic cavity, the cavity, the wall of the cavity is going to be made of astrocytes. So remember how I talked about if there is a damaged in if there is a damage in the central nervous system, then the wall of the or astrocytes is going to come together to take care of that problem. So it's going to make a wall around the cystic cavity so that um, it's kind of protected or it's kind of shut away from the rest of the central nervous system. So in this case, it's going to be an astrocyte. Now, last example, a 75-year-old male who had extensive atherosclerosis in several vascular beds reveals a lesion. The lesion is composed of what kind of cells? Again, if there is atherosclerosis resulting in a lesion, the lesion is going to be composed of later on in life. He's 75 years old, so if he had a lesion earlier, that's going to be taken care of by cells, which are astrocytes.